Hello, guys and girls. Welcome back to the shop or the studio, as it were. Look behind me, guys. A CRF 450 that's been there forever. It is finally completely finished and is going to be heading off to its new owner Monday, I believe. It'll be heading north up to Ken, along with a couple other goodies that I'm throwing in with it. So, you know, trying to keep take care of our winners. Uh, what's that thing back there right now? Uh, personal project of mine. Real powerhouse there. What, whopping eight horsepower? That, guys, was the first engine that I ever rebuilt when I was 11. And I had to go back through it. <laughs> not, that it not that I did anything wrong, but uh, it had a problem with the transmission. But uh, this was me testing it, oh, oh, so many years ago. But, yeah, that's the same, same machine there after I'd finished the rebuild. It was just the top end. But the trick was I picked it up, disassembled. The, the Honda dealership had pulled it apart. It just needed the piston and rings. And I told Dad, I said, you know, I want to do it. So we went and picked it up in a uh, milk crate, the engine anyway. I brought it home, and what was it? A month later, I finally finished it. <laughs> it's a lot of trial and error going on with that. Good grief. That in the climber's manual. But that's... That's Genesis back there, guys. That's the first engine I ever built. All right. Business. Let's see what all we need to talk about here. All right. There's a few more reminders from our multimedia team. Looks like I need to run, read through. All right. We are holding a new giveaway every week of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series. This week, we are giving away an Alpine Star Supertech M8 Echo Helmet. Go to partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX to enter. I'm pretty sure my group's going to drop that link in the chat as we go along. I bet they already did that, even though I can't see it. Because of entries for the Alpine Stars helmet end at midnight tonight, and after that, we're going to take entries to win Ripper Goggle, Ripper Goggle roll-off system from Risk Racing. Say that time three times real fast. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, let's see. We, we had some other stuff they wanted me to cover. I think uh, we were going to tell you who won last week. Yes. And the person that run, won the uh, Michelin Starcross fire, five tires in, how do you pronounce this? I'm going to let somebody else help me on that. Let's try it. Makokoda. Makokoda, Iowa. We're going to go with that. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is our winner. What was his name? I believe it was Connor, Connor M., so congrats, uh, congratulations, Connor. Uh, put them to good use. All right. We already talked about the Risk Racing Ripper Automatic Goggle Roll-Off System. See, that's twice now. <laughs> and no, I wasn't going to stick to just Iowa. I had to do a look up on the pronunciation, Chelsea. All right, kids. Let's swing around and see if you've got a few questions for me. Yeah, they are starting to pile up. Paul. Hey, Paul. How are you doing today? John, happy Friday, brother. We made it. We made it, but not without getting confused on a few things. The issue with the Kawasaki would run one, one minute as I'm backing out of it in this shop and it stalls. All right. What'd you find, Paul? Refuses to turn over even all the conditions, uh, connections, conditions are correct. What am I missing? All right. We'll run one minute and then it'll just stop and then it won't start back up at all. That's sounding like a either A, the ignition switch, because most of that is it's not like it's got a real high tech ECU on it. Uh, that ECU is mainly just a, a CDI, it's a capacitive discharge uh, ignition system on it. So it sounds like this is a hard wiring issue. Why is it running only a minute? Mm. Uh, that, that would be difficult to say, but I'm leaning toward the electrical side right now. So I think I'd start checking point to point on the wiring harness and see what you find. Nick K has asked me, long time no see, John. What is the best LED bulbs for the 2001 Honda 400 EX? 
I really don't have a personal preference on that. I would probably shy away from most of the bulbs you see in China. I don't think they're balanced very well from the ones that I've seen. If you can find anything made, uh, especially from uh, Pella or HID Industries, any of the European uh, manufacturers, I'd probably lean toward one of those if I were you. Christopher Rhodes, hi JT. Hello Christopher, how are you doing today? Um, Josh just asked me, when's my parts here? Mm. You have to give us more than that to go on, Josh. Uh, if you're looking for an order, call into the uh, the team or send them an email and just give me your order number. And say, hey, what's going on? Because believe me, uh, it's not like we're we've got your parts hidden in a closet somewhere and we don't want to send them to you. If we've got them, we're going to ship them out. Oh, Panagiotis. Uh, hopefully, uh, Panagiotis, how is it going? This is my CRF. 450R friend from Sweden. The box came back completely ripped apart after traveling to and from Europe, not once, but twice. And it had roughly four items left in it. Well, I can't even remember what all I had in there, but we reboxed it and we shipped it back out, I believe yesterday. And I think Hank was gonna send you a message with your, your shipping number. Maybe, just maybe, it'll make it to you this time. Curiosity, do you work at a church? Uh, Google Earth the address, and it looks like you, you know, your address is at a church. Terrence, one, okay, two. <laughs> Sprayed and Mike, I have an 03 400EX set for a while. Now I can't pull the clutch handle in. What could it be? Probably just a, a frozen clutch cable. Uh, typically, it's not going to freeze up down in the engine, you know, just sitting still, but corrosion gets in that cable and... You're not going to bust it loose. Yeah, Josh is right. Rusty clutch cable. Plus one for Josh. <clears throat> I believe he is right. Do his garage. Where are the where are the Dunlop Q3s I've had on well, I had on a 150 on a back order for two months? Like I said, Dewey, it, we, it's not like we're hiding them from you. Send a uh, request into customer service and let them try to run down how long it's going to take. Um, we were we were needing a set of tires for one of our units. I was able to get the fronts. I couldn't get the rears for two months for myself. <sighs> well, give us a call. Let's see if we can figure out where they are. Christopher Rhodes, I want to I want to oh, where are you? I want to see you to uh, turbo or NX the four hundred as well as stretch the suspension front and back. Make it a kill killer dune runner. We're still up in the air is what we want to do with uh, that turd that I'm staring at right now. This is it. Yeah, she's stuck in the corner waiting for her, <coughs> excuse me, beauty shots. <laughs> she's anything but a beauty. But hey, um, once we make up our minds what we want to do with it, um, we'll throw that out there. Nick K. Also, what's better, the TRX 450R shocks or the YFC shocks on the 400EX? The 400EX I had, I used the ones off a of Honda 450R, and I was pleased with them. Now, is the is the ones off the, uh, the YFC going to be better? I I don't know. Um, I, I think they're rather equal from what uh, all things being considered. But the uh, the 400 the 450R shocks work for me, although I'd never done it when I owned that machine roughly nine years ago, uh, I'd probably go through and revalve them using the race tech system because there, it was really harsh I mean, they, they would just beat my arms. Now, granted, I'm not even nine years ago, I wasn't in that great a shape then either, but, uh, I, I could have stood a little bit plusher ride. Josh, just give me a th thumbs up. Cool. Paul says, well, it started up very easily and ran for a few days, so all the electrical stuff is correct. So I got a new carburetor thinking that the first one was bad, but the second one is doing the exact same thing. Hmm. Well, I'm still going to lean toward the uh, the CDI. I fought with one of those a long time ago. and it was, I think the CDI is on the back on that bayou. You could actually tap it with a screwdriver. It wouldn't start. You tap it with a screwdriver, and then you can start it up. Telling you, look at that CDI, see what it's got. <clears throat> Dewey's Garage, thanks, John. Well, you're welcome. Terrence, love your videos. Well, thanks for watching. Paul Smith, 
2009 Hayabusa hot motor faulty start after riding. What could possibly cause the problem? You're telling me it doesn't want to start after it's uh, heated up? That could be a multitude of things, but most of them are not good. Um, when's the last time you flushed out your cooling system? I'd, I'd want to know that because it sounds like things are getting a little toasty in there. And is your, uh, cooling, is your cooling fan doing what it's supposed to do to keep that temperature in check? Start it with the basics first, especially being a 2009. It's, got a, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, so I'll be curious when the last time was the system's been flushed out. Maybe take a look at that first. Terrence has asked me, do y'all have a, do you all, do y'all have a, you're from down south like us, do y'all have a piston for the Yamaha Grizzly 700 2008 in stock? I wouldn't know off the top of my head, but I would bet yes. And if, if we didn't have the OEM one in stock, I, I bet we could match up one with uh, one of the Wisco units. Paul said, same thing, bowl is full of fuel, tank has been flushed out, Urgh, aggravating, trying to bring things back to life. Isn't it though? <laughs> it's also kind of very, it's also very satisfying when you do figure it out. All right, uh, here Panagiotis responded about, yes, it is the next house, just the church two or three uh, houses away. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Man, you really are. <laughs> He's Panagiotis is actually on an island off the uh, the coast of Sweden. The best I can best way I can describe it. I mean, there's nothing around him. Hey, great place to go riding, though. I would imagine. All right. You know what I didn't do? I didn't. I've, I actually already caught y'all. I did my announcements for the day, but then I didn't answer any questions I missed last week. So let's swing back around since I've already caught up with you, and it's only. Only 13 minutes into this. Matthew Ball had asked me, do you have to clean out the inside of the caliper before putting new brake pads in? Also, will pushing the um, bore back make the rear blade, rear fluid rise at all? <sighs> if you're saying clean out the inside of the caliper, I would, as far as just getting on the debris out of there, especially if it's on an ATV, you're going to have all kind of mud and other crud in there. You'll need to, uh, to get cleaned out. So it'll can move freely because it's actually just fo floating over the, uh, the, the brake disc itself. And yes, when you push it back into that bore, it is going to force the fluid back up into your reservoir. So whenever you top off your reservoir completely, if you want to do it the right way, push both of the bore of all of your braking system, all the different pistons all the way back in, then top it off. And that way it'll be at a, at its maximum. Otherwise, if they're, Worn if they've worn into the brake pads a pretty good bit, and you top it off, and you try to you know, get it get them to expand out. Well, then it's going to force oil out the top of your brake reservoir more than likely. Blood Trail, huh, interesting name. Had asked me, I have a 2001 Honda Rancher 350. Why would my airbox have oil sitting in the bottom of it? Mainly because there is a crankcase vent on, well, on most all engines, and yours may be, spend, you know, may be starting to get a little long, a little bit lower on compression, and it's getting a lot of blow-by. And when that goes down into the, uh, the crankcase, it builds up pressure, and it, of course, relieves that pressure with a, uh, a rubber hose or rubber line that goes up to the, uh, the airbox. Well, along with that spent combustion, if you will, that goes down into the crank into the crankcase. It also may pick up a little bit of oil on the way in a mist form and just spit it into the uh, your, your air box. So that's more than likely where it's come from. Or if you'd uh, rolled it over by, by chance, of course, it's going to take a big, it being that uh, rubber line is going to take a big gulp of that oil, uh, air and oil and then dump it into the, uh, the air box when you flip it on its uh, on its wheels. But yeah, that's where it's coming from is your actual engine cases. Tim Hall had asked me, turned on my eight, 2018 Rubicon, it makes this ticking noise and the screen flashes, nothing when I push the star button, what might the issue be? I'd say there's a 99% chance that you have a uh, battery issue. I mean, she's coming up on four years old and it sounds to me like that battery may be giving up. But before you do that, do at least do a static test after you've charged it up. And then if you've got a battery tester, go ahead and do so. Because I've seen them just with corrosion on the terminals do what you're 
of what you're describing. I mean, if it if it doesn't have a really good connection in between the uh, the battery terminals and the the wire ends or the uh, the terminal itself, it can't send the necessary amperage through. So it's either going to be a your battery connections or your battery, one or the other. Now I give it a ninety five percent chance it's going to be your battery. Bike Life Marty had asked me, I hear a lot of people say rebuild kits aren't any good. What's your feedback on them? Well, I guess it depends on which kit you're using, um, Bike Life. I mean, it comes down to uh, if you're either going to go with OEM or an aftermarket, whether it be uh, Hot Cams or Weissco, that I know they all offer various kits for and sometimes entire engine rebuilds when you're talking about Weissco with the Garage Buddy system. But it boils down to the quality of your, the parts that you're using, which, you know, what we sell at Partzilla, they're going to be, you know, quality, right? Not some of this um, stuff that you can get on eBay. I would be very afraid of that for the most part, unless that it is one of, the, one of the names that I've mentioned. If it's a no-name knockoff and it's really cheap, well, that's the real trick. <laughs> it's really cheap. And uh, good is not... Good is not cheap, and cheap is no good. There we go. I think that's how you say it. Mm. All right. Let's flip back and see if we've got a few more to answer. Questions to answer. All right. And then Paul said, because uh, I see a square box on the back of the is the ignition module. You are correct. Yes, the, the cheese is on the uh, on the left side of the frame. I think that's where it is. <laughs> Panagiotis said, not exactly. Everything around me is big farms. I have to ride 30 minutes to the closest motocross track. Make friends with a farmer. Tell him you'll plow his fields for free on your motocross bike. <laughs> Um, Terrence is asking me, what days do you go live so that I may be able to ask questions? Um, it's a, when I can get to it, it's every Friday at three o'clock. So come on over to uh, our YouTube channel and I'll sit here for 30 minutes and do my best. And if not, I do have other people that are watching and listening as well that uh, work for uh, the company. And uh, we take notes and uh, we try to take, th uh, take care of or answer questions on the fly. And if we can't, then we'll find out the answers and uh, just send them to you in a private message. So, but to answer your question, Friday's at three. Yeah, Paul knows. <laughs> <clears throat> Josh said, what about all balls? I've had two pretty good kits. Yeah, I use a lot of their equipment, um, especially their bearing replacement kits. I was really impressed with uh, a head bearing that we did on our 2008 Goldwing. That was an involved project. But uh, we went from the regular ball bearings to a tapered type bearing. And uh, it was a really nice kit. And it, it had everything that I needed that, you know, with that one kit, all the different seals and dust covers, et cetera, you know, to get it done. Panagiotis, I'm Greek in Sweden. That's why I have a difficult name. No, what, what's up? Put it into Google Translate. I think I got pretty close to how you pronounce it. Panagiotis. Well, guys, did I catch all in like 18 minutes of I'm speed talking here? I guess I shouldn't have drank all that cough medicine this morning. <laughs> well, if I've caught up with everybody, that means I can get out of here. And actually, we've got some testing to do on a, a live stream that another part of our company is going to be doing, in, I think, next week. So, Tracy... Mike, are y'all ready? Coming for you. We're going to figure this thing out. All right. I think there was one more note at the bottom of my questions. Okay. Uh, just don't forget to enter our PRMX sweepstakes. New winners every week. Enter here, partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX. And... We're giving away another Alpine Stars helmet. So jump over there, enter to win. There's no cost to do so. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to sign off. Everybody have a great weekend, a great week. And God willing, I will be back to talk to you again this coming up Friday at 3. 
Until then, take care.